We all know that Marvel's Avengers did not receive widespread acclaim. If there's one thing they did exceptionally well, it's nailing Hulk to perfection. The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction isn't Hulk's first amazing video game appearance, it's a fantastic game. Nonetheless, the way the Earth shakes when you move, as well as the pure seismic booms that Hulk's basic attacks generate, make this version of the Hulk feel quite unique. The ability to repeatedly seize an opponent and slam them into the ground deserves special attention. In Marvel's Avengers, commanding the Hulk will make you feel just as strong as controlling the Hulk should. Symphony of the Night makes an excellent job at establishing Alucard's character. It begins by depriving him of all power. However, by the time you've acquired some familiars, learned some spells, gathered some equipment, and leveled up, you'll be destroying your opponents. You have discovered half a dozen different ways to break the game by the time you get halfway around the inverted castle. The difficulty of Symphony of the Night drops down a cliff in the latter quarter of the game, but by the finish, it's an awesome power dream. Doom isn't a simple game, but it's one that can be mastered with practice. More significantly, once you've mastered it, you'll feel almost unstoppable. It helps that when your glory kills, the enemy animations convey a dramatic picture of terror. These dramatic instant kill sequences frequently involve people attempting to flee, and their expressions are sheer horror. This is the only game that has a bestiary full of exclusively demonic creatures and makes you nearly feel sorry for them. Solid Snake has always been tough, and he had all the skills he needed to destroy an army invisibly, yet he never felt powerful. Raiden and Revengeance isn't in the same boat. You may assume that chopping adversaries into a million pieces in slow motion becomes monotonous after a while, but you'd be incorrect. It's always a great time. But, more importantly, it gives you a tremendous feeling. The boss fights only add to the tension. You'll be up against a slew of certified badasses, but you'll always come out on top. You'll feel like the ultimate cyber ninja in the process. You could say Raiden is a cut above the rest. Devil May Cry has always placed a premium on player expression. Regardless of the character you play, the game will let you to use their particular powers and attacks to completely destroy the horde of foes on screen. The best thing about this sense of authority is that it is earned. Devil May Cry 5 seems like a synthesis of all of the previous game's strongest elements. The game provides you with a broad collection of maneuvers, but you won't be able to use them effectively unless you learn their applications and figure out how to best chain them with other movements. Devil May Cry 5 provides you with everything you'll need to be a total badass. Realizing this potential is only up to you. Arcane Studios games frequently provide you with a wide range of tools to employ, but they've never encouraged you to use them to their full potential. You'll be teleporting from rooftop to rooftop, using your abilities to link your foe's destinies, and then killing them all with a well-placed headshot. That is, when you aren't sending them a million miles away or dispatching them with any of your arsenal's lethal weapons. Or, you know, hacking their own security systems and using their own automated turret cannons to take them out. In Deathloop, the entire world is your playground. Except that it's a playground dedicated solely to murder. The Bayonetta games share some parallels with Devil May Cry, the king of character action games. However, the abilities can become even more bizarre here. For starters, there's a lot of the beloved Platinum slowness mechanic. Aside from that, the game's scenarios are lively, exaggerated, and absolutely ridiculous. You'll feel tremendously powerful, hyper-capable, and unstoppable as you work your way through this curriculum.
Control is the only game that has ever precisely scaled your power growth. While your regular handgun never seems inadequate, and you gain the ability to telekinetically toss objects early on, that's only the beginning. By the conclusion of the game, you'll be flying about each arena, collecting debris to use as a big shield, tossing it back at your enemies, and taking their companions' minds. It's a mad dash. It's never easy to maintain control, but it still makes you feel like the powerful telekinetic warrior you are. When you play Lost Judgment, you'll notice that it's a lot like the previous game in the series, which was the successor to the Yakuza action series. However, if you understand the parry mechanic and Lost Judgment, you'll know that a single additional mechanic can completely change the game. It is entirely feasible to fight whole boss encounters without being tagged once, instead deflecting all of their strikes and delivering your own lethal combos. When you add in the typical Yakuza hot actions, you've got yourself a recipe for feeling unstoppable. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the page.